Hey everyone, it's Rhonda here from Nelson Soapery. Before I get started on today's video, I thought I'd do a quick introduction, which I don't do a lot, do I really? Uh, but anyway, today I am going to be making some whipped soap. I did have um, one of um, my followers say to me, oh, can you please do that in a video on that or um, the sugar scrub? So I said, of course I will. So anyway, today is for that lovely lady. So um, we'll be doing this video and um, we'll get going. But before we get going, I'll explain a few things. So for me, um, I always make it. These are my little jars, if you can see them. Um, so this is um, the jar I usually use. It's an amber jar. The only thing is this is my large one. It only fits 150 grams. So, and it is glass. So it's better not to be glass for whip soap. So I'm going to be changing to these. Um, as most of you know, I order in bulk. I've ordered a thousand of these. It's really cheap when you order a thousand. I think I've paid uh, about three hundred and twenty dollars for the thousand. Um, the thing that will trick you though is when you actually buy containers, they'll look super duper cheap, but it comes with a container, no lid. So then, of course, you need to buy the lid, which adds on to the cost. So it's. I always think it's a bit sneaky that they actually sell it like that because who's going to buy that without that I mean but anyway so you'll have to buy both of them um, if you're going to be um, getting them both but like I said um, so these are the ones we're going to do I've already pre um, put some um, a little sticker on top which uh, most of you know I use printable vinyl um, printable vinyl is great because it it doesn't actually wash off so um, you can pop it under water and it won't wash off if you scrubbed it of course it will but um, generally it doesn't and it's really great if you do markets you can just wipe over the top of it so the only thing that I will say about these is because the bottom here um, is actually thinner than the top so it's kind of like a cone shape so doing the label has caused me I mean so much grief honestly so that's the only thing I'd say about this is get a template um, for these. If anyone has a supplying template with nothing on it, oh, let, message me. Um, I'd be really interested to know because I've searched all over the internet. I've done everything, but just cannot get the right label to suit these. And I like mine to wrap around uh, like this because that way you can put all the instructions and stuff on the back here um, as I've done here. But anyway, let's get started and um, I will actually be doing some whip soap. We're going to do a mermaid one today. So we'll do it in a mermaid colour. And of course, I'll explain everything as we go along. If you would like to um, subscribe, please do. Um, that really does help my channel. And if you don't mind, just um, putting a thumbs up if you think my video is worthy because that really does help us and it helps our channel grow. And by growing the channel means I can keep bringing out amazing videos um, and of course give you all the recipes to help you along the way. Let's get started. Hey everyone, before we actually get started today, I thought that I would actually show you exactly how I get um, my mixture. So the mixture that we're going to be starting with, you can actually buy it in a pre-made form. So, um, and then of course you do need to add your oils and you do need to have the other recipe, but you know, I buy mine in a pre-mixed form, which is this massive big bucket that, you know, you can see here. And this is from a company called Heirloom in Australia. So you can get um, like a Stevenson's um, mix. Most of us know what Stevenson's is. They actually, you know, do the melt and pour and things like that. So you can get theirs or in Australia, um, there's company Heirloom and they actually make their own mix which is very similar. I actually prefer their mix over the Stevenson's. I don't know why, I just, I feel that it's more lighter when it's mixed, but um, that's just my opinion. Um, you know, honestly, it's just my opinion. And as I say in every video, I do not get paid by any of these suppliers. I just simply, you know, talk about what I like and what works for me. So inside the bucket, you'll see, this is what the mixture actually looks like. And you can see this bucket is massive. I think it's maybe 20 kilos, I can't remember, but I think it is. I'll, I'll write that down and I will pop the links in the bottom anyway. And so all we're going to be doing for this is sanitizing absolutely everything that we're going to be using. And then we will get our mixer out. And of course that needs to be sanitized. So I'll do that before I come back. And then we're going to be popping this in and then I'll tell you what to do with this. So it isn't as easy as just popping it in and that's it. Um, we do need to mix things and be really careful um, because you can actually ruin the pre-mix if you mix it too much, which I've seen lots of people do that. So you've got to keep your eye on it. 
and I always think making this reminds me similar of making lemon meringue pie when you've got to keep your eye on the meringue that's it kind of reminds me very similar kind of thing to that but anyway I'll get everything sanitized and then I'll come back and we'll be on to the next step all right, we're back again. So now I've got all this set up. The whole bench has been sanitized. Um, of course, I'm wearing gloves as well. This whole um, machine has been sanitized, the bowl inside. And of course, this uh, will be sanitized in just a moment. Um, but I pretty much, I've already sanitized and I'll just do it double time. I, that's just me. I just like to make sure it's 100%. Um, and then of course, I've already sanitized my bowls and they're all to the side because they're the ones we're going to be using. And um, then we're going to be using a bit of this sparkle as well. And, um, and then of course, a little bit of the blue. These are cosmetic grade um, micas as well from Sudoff Australia. And then of course, um, this beautiful um, green one as well, also from Sudoff, I've just repurposed the container. And these are the containers that I'm going to be using to be popping all of these in as well. So we've got all of that to the side. And of course, we've got the whip to the side. So now that this is all sanitized, I'm just literally going to weigh up the amount um, of whip that we need. So we're going to be using one kilo just for this um, mix. But honestly, if I did it for a market or something, I would be doing a couple kilos um, because one really doesn't go that far. And then, of course, I have all my oils. So I'll show you the oils. So um, I use a lot of these ones from N Essentials. It's basically, it's a cosmetic grade company of raw materials. So they sell, you know, butters and um, oils and so on. So we'll be using an avocado oil and I'll also be using jojoba oil. Um, you can use whatever you want, like you can even use like just sweet almond, um, apricot kernels a great one as well. But I just like to use um, the ones that are, are more of a higher grade for this because, you know, we all know that, um, buying whipped um, soap is not cheap like it isn't cheap so I just think the customer should get a really beautiful product in the end but it's a personal decision as well and you know customers don't really ask is there jojoba oil in it it's just something I use a lot and I really really love it and then of course we're going to be using um, a fragrance oil now do check with your supplier that the fragrance oil can be used on the body because some of them cannot. Um, just because it says it can be used on a candle doesn't mean it's for the body. So do make sure you check and also check um, the measurements down the side. So some of them will say, you know, 5%, some will say 1%. So do check um, exactly what you're going to be using. But for today, I'm going to be using um, one that I really love and I use a lot, which is called Peony. And so the Peony is just that really nice kind of rosy type sort of color. Um, or scent I should say so we're going to be using that and it, it goes with the mermaid you know just that beautiful soft kind of gentle smell um, and then we'll get started so I'm going to weigh all this up I'll come back with it and then I'll show you the next step of what I'm going to do all right we're back everyone so I know that my head is cut off mostly um, for this video but it's just so that I can show you so I've obviously got my mixer ready with all the attachments on it and I have just weighed up all of my mixture. So this is a kilo in here or a thousand grams. And I know that it looks like it's only half full, but the thing with this is what you're going to be doing is we're going to be mixing this so that this in here doubles its size. Don't try and do it more than double. So once you mix it, you'll see it will sort of rise um, because it's aerated and it keeps turning over. But make sure that you're not doing it too much because what can actually happen is it can just sizzle back to nothing and almost liquefy itself so yeah so you you have to be really careful and watching it all the time i usually mix it in two minute bursts and then i sort of take it out and have a look and i'll just turn it with the spatula um so we're going to pop that in and get that going in the meantime, um, I've already done all of these, so we're going to um, be piping it. I use this massive big piping tip that you can see here. This is just a $2 piping tip. And then, of course, I use these massive bags. But I will show you how to join the colours so that we can get a couple colours in it and make it look really pretty as well. And like I said, I've already got my jars and everything to the side. But the first step, of course, today is uh, whipping it and doing all of this bit. So I'm going to whip it. And then I'm going to be adding my um, little bits and pieces in in the meantime. So we'll whip it and then I will come back. 
So now we're going to pop it in the mixer, as you can see, and we're just going to mix it all around here. So I'm going to give it about two minutes um, to mix it each time. So basically the whole idea is to get it nice and fluffy and bring that mixture, which will be like three quarters of the way up on that silver bowl. And all it's doing is just aerating itself and continuously mixing up. So every couple of minutes, I'll just give it a check to see how it's going. And um, when I think it's really nice and fluffy, that's when I'm going to be adding in the rest of the oils and then just giving it a quick mix from there. So that's the bit that's really important um, is just to make sure that everything is combining itself really well and like I said it's aerated we don't want to do it too much because if we do this mixture too much it can just sort of fizzle down and basically um, after it's given the peaks then it will just literally um, halve its weight um, or you know halve its volume I should say you know um, and I've seen that happen lots of times so you do have to be careful with this it's not as easy as it um, sounds and over time you will get used to it and see exactly um, how it's working but I don't mix mine for a long period of time either this is you know like I said just in bursts of one or two minutes and maybe three times at the very most so definitely no mixing it more than six minutes um, at any one time so I'll let you watch me and then I will come back in just a moment to show you the next step. fluffy this is see it's stuck on the spoon you want it to be like that and that is looking gorgeous so now what we're going to be doing is we're going to be adding in um, our scent so I'm just going to weigh this up so I'll just be a second I forgot about doing that measurements of this because like I said every different fragrance that you use um, is going to have a different measurement so you will need to just look at your supplier um, to exactly what you need okay for that it's really important that you know that you just double check all of these things as well because we're doing several colors we're not going to add the color in yet if I was just to do one color 100% I would be adding it in but we're going to have to separate this into a few containers and um and keep going so we're just going to mix in the oils for now so we've already put in our fragrance oil and now what i'm going to be doing is putting in um a little bit of a hobo oil and then of course i'm going to be putting in um, my avocado avocado has a really nice fatty content so it just feels really beautiful on the skin so once again i'm just going to um put them in so you can have like your little measuring glass which i've got here or you can do it in a cup form so but for today i'll do it in a cup form because i think most people would have a cup at home um you know so that they can use it like a measuring cup all right so i'm actually going to use the spoon today because one of my measuring cups has wax in so which is no good is it so of course if you're using anything make sure you just disinfect it again these are have have been cleaned but once again i'll just double clean them and this is all I use is these little um, spoons. Um, so this is a tablespoon that I'm using at the moment. So I'm just going to be putting in one tablespoon um, of avocado oil. And then I will go to my jojoba oil. And then for this one, I'm going to be popping in two tablespoons of this oil. Um, or generally um, for this mix you can put like one third of a cup so if you're just using one you know just um, look you don't have to be exact to be honest you don't um, because you'll be able to tell with the mixture if you feel like it's too fluffy or too loose but if you put too much oil in 
then the problem is it's not going to stay stiff and it's going to look really daggy. Um, so yeah, so that's that's actually something really important as well. And I'm going backwards trying to do this so that you can see. Um, and um, yeah, so all we're going to do is we're going to mix it up a little bit more and then I'll come back. So yeah, you, you can see that we didn't have to mix that up much at all. And now what I'm going to do is um, separate the colours into different containers. So that way um, we can just mix in the colours a little bit. So I'll be back in a moment. So we're going to add the colour in. So all it is is one teaspoon um, of the colour. Don't put too much or else the bath will be crazy um, colours and people may not like that. Um, so that's my suggestion, then we just turn this on. And all this is turned on for is literally just to mix everything um, up a little bit so I've divided it into thirds so I've got this one and then this other container here which I'll show you in a second um, but because I've already got this bowl I thought we might as well just mix it you know in here um, so now we just open this up and if I didn't say before this mixer that I'm using is honestly a cheap little mixer I think it's like $50 or something from my local um, store sorry about all the banging but I have to get that out <laughs> All right, so we'll mix it all up. All right, so we're going to be adding the blue in. I actually spilt it off camera and had to come and fix it. So one, um, like I said, you know, your teaspoon of that. And, um, and then, of course, this other one, I'm going to be using this sparkly. If you can have a look and see how sparkly and gorgeous that is. Don't put too much sparkle in because people won't like that either. It gets stuck and, you know, messy. But, you know, generally if they're buying like a mermaid one, they kind of want it to be sparkly and gorgeous. So that that's the only reason I do this one. Now, it is messier and harder definitely by doing it this way because it's not in the mixer. But... Um, I'm not going to clean the mixer out and sanitize it every time just to mix something for, you know, this would literally only be mixing in there for, oh, 10 seconds. So um, you can just mix it by hand and that's fine. Just make sure you mix it all the way through because you don't want bits of blue on somebody. Um, and it's quite easy to mix it through. Um, and, you know, as I've said at the start, do make sure you wear gloves. Number one, you need gloves, obviously, for sanitizing reasons but you'll appreciate gloves because this is a messy business as you can see um it's just like you know making a lemon pie as i said at the start it making a lemon pie is like so messy it's the one thing that i'm actually good at cooking um is lemon pies my older daughter is an amazing cook she actually cooks cakes but for me <laughs> oh i'm no good but anyway um and then of course this one is going to just be our sparkle so this just needs a, a quick whip because it's the sparkle is obviously white and it's just giving a bit of a look so now we have our three colors um like i said our white we've got the blue and then we've got this green all right we're back so we're up to the next bit so what i actually do with mine is i've just got this you know glad wrap um, or plastic wrap, I'm not sure what other countries call it. Um, here we just call it, you know, glad wrap or plastic film. And all I'm going to be doing on this is just laying it out flat. And then so that we can get the colours, we're just literally going to be putting a line of each of the colours in the centre. This way it will also keep the piping bag nice and clean. And um, that way we can do several, you know, several goes at this. So I just wrap all this plastic up, you know, early. So I sort of do this first. And it doesn't have to be perfect, you know, like you're just trying to create this really gorgeous kind of, 
you know, mermaidy type look. Um, I do have more of the green, so I'll pop more green in. And look how pretty these colors look. So then all we're going to be doing, because in America, I'm pretty sure you have um, a wrap and then it kind of joins together, but we don't have that in Australia. Um, as I say all the time, we're a much smaller company, uh, country, so we just don't have that. But anyway, so then what we're going to do is roll it up here. So it doesn't matter if you have that film or not. And literally just twist your ends and then that's it. I'll pop that aside and we'll keep doing this until we've filled all of these up. So, you know, anyone that says, oh, you know, I can make this, because uh, I've had that before. Oh, I can make this whip. It's so easy. Um, yeah, it's not super hard, but to be honest, the process is difficult. It's more difficult because, you know, um, it's messy. It's really time consuming. Like, I know that I cut this video down to only a few minutes, but honestly, this is a couple hour job. Um, you know, the time you start from the start. And then after that, of course, we've got all the dishes and cleaning up and so on. So, um, yeah, don't let anyone just try and tell you that it's a five second job because we all know it's not. Um, but anyway, that's just a, a little bit of my chat in the middle of that. And like I said, we'll wrap that one up. So then I've got two and I'll probably have enough to do a third one. <clears throat> and so we'll try and scrape it all out because we don't want to leave any behind. And like I said, once again, just put it in rows. There's no rhyme or reason. Um, there's no wrong way of putting it on this film. Um, if you just had one colour, well, obviously, just put the one colour on the film. You could put it straight in the piping bag if you want. Um, but this actually saves you from using lots of piping bags. And that way you can use the one piping bag and it doesn't have to be um, as messy. Um, even though the piping bags that I use say, you know, they say that they're disposable, I do wash them. And then I sanitize them and reuse them again because it's a waste of money and a waste for the environment if we're just going to literally throw them in the bin when we can reuse them. So we'll get all this bit out so then those ones are done. Rather than me use my fingers, we'll try to see if I can just get it off that. I'm making it look difficult, aren't I? And then we'll just pop this one on top here because we don't want to use another plastic film. And as I tell all my customers too, every single container is unique. Um, sometimes you'll get a customer that will ask, well, how I want it exactly the same. And I just tell them it's not going to be because, um, you know, this is, we're not a factory. Um, we're just hand making this. So it's important for the customer to understand as well. So you do need to let them know that, you know, no, none of them are going to be exactly the same, you know, cause I've often had people that say, oh, well, the swirl's the same. And I just tell them, well, I can't, I can't do it. The same as I don't replicate a lot of my soaps for the same reason because it's just too hard. So anyway, we have the three here. So we've got the one, two and three. I know you can't see a bit because of the camera. I'm sorry, but anyway, so I'm going to clean this bit up and I'll come up and I'll show you how to pipe the next bit as well. When I do pipe the next bit, I usually pipe it directly onto um, my scale um, because that way you can weigh it exactly. But I'll show you that as well. And lucky, lucky me, I do have a new scale. My husband bought me one for Mother's Day. So anyway, um, I'll be back in a moment. All right, everyone, we're back. So I've got my scale set up here. Um, as I said, my husband did buy me this one for Mother's Day. So I think it should tell you the totals at the end here. And I've already weighed them. So these jars should be about 300 grams. And then these ones will be about 180. So um, yeah, so I will definitely be doing these ones um, so that we can all see exactly what we're doing. Now, I do have, as I showed before, my piping bag here is all set up. And then of course it does have um, the big nozzle at the end. You can use a small nozzle, but these ones are like, I think $1.95 from your cake shop. So it's really worth it. 
Now, what I'm going to do here is we, so we already have, you know, this bit here. So one bit, keep it um, twirled up at the end, you know, like we've already twisted. And then this bit, we're going to just simply cut it. Um, and that's so that it will just go through the end. But you could leave it and pull it through as well. Um, but this is the way I do mine. So I'm just literally going to cut off the end. And then all we're going to do is slide it in the bag. If you think it's not sliding, you can actually put a piece of paper in here and slide it in with the paper. That's actually um, a really clever way as well. As well. But So what I do is I hold it in and I, hopefully you can see what I'm doing. So I'll just kind of shake it in. So you, can you see how it's actually sh shaken in the bag? And then the good thing is this, the plastic's inside. So when I'm finished, I'm just gonna pull it back out. So we've got that in the bag. So we will start with our first one. Make sure you tear your scale down because you want the, you don't want the container into um, your measurements. And then literally all we're going to be doing is um, just piping. So I just do one bit in the middle and then I just literally slowly go around the outside. And I do one layer and then go in the middle because I don't like the middle to be empty. I think that's a bit mean to give someone something that's um, empty. And like I said, make sure that we're um, doing all the measurements because we want it to be perfect. And so for this one here, if you can see this, I don't know whether you can see, but on the scale it says 170 grams. Now I did one the other day that had been deflated and it went to 300. So the difference is when you're whipping it and it whips up really, really big, this jar here is only going to be 170. Um, and then of course, you know, you've got to knock it down. So we're going to knock this down and see, because if you can see the little air bubbles at the bottom here, you know, so I'm take it off the bench and then, I'm sorry, but you're going to hear me whack this down. I don't like to put that noise on there. And we'll see how far it goes down. Okay, so if you can see this, like, can you see the peak here? You actually could not put a lid on that. So obviously, um, each time you're doing this, you need to test and test and test and test. So we know this one, we're not going to get the lid on that. So, I mean, that one will be my daughter. She'll love that. So um, we worked out that that's 170. So we might only get 150 in these jars because we have double whipped it. So we will just test again. And this is why you need to put it on the scale. It's really important to keep putting them on the scale. And if you run out of mixture, don't worry because we have a couple more bags. And then all we're going to do the bags is literally pull that out and then we'll throw that away. And then we get the next bag and we're going to pop the next bag in exactly the same so I'll just cut the end off and pop it in the bag and we'll just sort of push it to the end and so you can see it's in here now there will be a little bit of air in between the two so this one we're going to have to be really careful Okay, so this is only going to be 146 or 150 roughly um, that's going to fit in a jar, okay? So that way you can see that's exactly what the customer is going to get. But I mean, look how cute that looks. So now we know that it is only going to be, you know, 150. We can put more into this one as well. So, you know, 168 is it. Um, and let's just hope the lid goes down on that one, hey? But I'll keep that one because that one can be my demo one. And now we'll start for the next one. Just make sure you keep pushing the top of the bag so it doesn't come out of the top. And so these are only going to be 95 to 100. Um, that's definitely it, so I'll tap it down. So if you can see that, that is quite to the top. So we're definitely not going to get any more than 95 grams in that. So that's 94. So we know that we have to do these to be 90 now. So keep your eye on the measurement. 
because uh, there's nothing worse than making it look beautiful and then you literally cannot put the lid on. I just need to put a little bit more in that one. So we're just going to open up the third one and then we've done nearly all of these. So you can see by all of our work, it hasn't made that many. Um, so that's what I was saying, you know, like generally you would do big batches of this. You, you wouldn't do like a real tiny weeny baby kind of batch. Just wiggle this into the bag. You know, make sure your customers get what they're paying for as well. And in between, if your hands get sticky, just wipe it all off. I'm back everyone we have finished making them so I thought I would actually show you exactly um, what we've made so here you can see this is um, how my one's going to look it is going to have a clear label here um, I just haven't put it, popped it on yet and then at the top I just have my vinyl um, sticker of course with my business name and so on so you can see this is the bigger jar and then of course um, this is the smaller jar so when you're um, finished making them and you know you want to take your photos to put them on your website make sure you leave them like that because obviously that looks a bit more attractive than just that um, and people want to see what they look like but you do also need to write on there um, I just do a little disclaimer to say you know shots are for um, you know advertising only and clearly it's not going to come like that because sometimes people will say well I want it to look like that and obviously it can't without the lid um, the lid does need to go on so yeah so that is my suggestion um, you know but make sure you take your photos and don't forget that so always do a little one um, that you can take your photos with and you know I'm always really honest when I pop anything on the website so don't try and use a name that doesn't belong to it you know so um, I've had lots of questions of people saying well can I call it um, you know can I call olive oil or something else no you can't just keep it exactly as it is and make sure you pop every ingredient into it if you're trying to find the ingredients and you buy a mixture like mine is a mix a pre-mix just go onto the website and you can just write down everything that is in the listing on the suppliers they have to supply everything um, and then it's nice and easy and then it's done and then these ones will look beautiful and they'll be ready for market just remember it does take a lot of time and a lot of money to make these so um, don't sell them for ten dollars or eight dollars or something you know you do need to sell them for a profit so my ones like um, jars like this I usually sell for twenty five dollars just to give you an idea and then the smaller ones here will be like seventeen dollars so um, and I do sell them so you know uh, make sure that you get paid for what your worth is hopefully my video has been um, an amazing help for you today and if it has make sure you give me a thumbs up because that really does help my channel. And of course, I love hearing all your comments um, and I am so flattered that everyone, um, or not everyone, but lots and lots of people are messaging me to say um, how much they really love my channel and they look forward to the videos. So I will keep them coming. I will do no less than two uh, a week. Often, um, as you've seen, I'll pop an extra one in or just a five minute one of something I'm doing to give you an idea. Um, and I like to pop in those ones because they're like little 
little trick bits, aren't they, to help you along the way. But anyway, um, before I go, I will just pop the video down so that you can see the end result. And, um, and then hopefully you can make some just like me. And I'm positive that you can. So get going, ladies and gents, and make something amazing, colourful, and lots of fun. So here we go. I'll pop the video down and you can see the rest. So this is what they will look like. I mean, how sweet are they? They just look so lovely. And, um, you know, don't forget your photos, however you're going to display them. Um, I have done a video very, very early on on how to display um, products. But you can also have a look at my stall, my market stall, and that shows a bit about that too. Anyway, have an amazing day. Make sure you do something lovely for your next door neighbour. See you next time. Bye for now.